We are live. Welcome back once again for the third episode of Season 14 Podcast. This is your host, The Taco Kid, a.k.a. Words Are Hard, a.k.a. Who Cares? Moving on to my co-host. We got Will in the house, Concept, Exile. You know him. You may love him. You may hate him. As you can see, I currently have the wonderful stadium of uh, Old Trafford here in the background. You man, you fans. Shout out. Appreciate you. How's everyone right. doing? What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? Hey, Pete. How's it going? Hello, hello, hello. All Welcome. Right. Cool, cool, cool. So to kind of briefly dive into what we're going to be talking about today, everyone, we're going to lightly touch on uh, Team of the Season predictions and some questions later at the end. Um, but the beef of this episode is mostly going to be based around the champions and the champions of the leagues, the cups. So let's go ahead and dive right into our main conversation here to start off. Super League. Young boys, congratulations. Super League champions. Ty Ty, I know that might hurt a little bit to you, but uh, what kind of feedback do you have about Super League and the way it started versus the way it ended? Well, uh, Young Boys is a very good team, so hats off to them. I mean, not literally, because I'm not taking my hat off on stream, as you guys know. <laughs> uh, but... Hats off to them. They uh, played well for most of the season. They almost sold it on purpose until the last game day. Luckily, they had uh, two games in hand, so they were able to still coast um, against bottom feeders to make the uh, title theirs. So congratulations, young boys, and I'm not bitter at all. Not even one <laughs> bit. Not even one bit. The face doesn't give it away either. Mm-mm. Concept, uh, what, what kind of feedback did you have on Super League? I know that you're not in Super League, but obviously, you know, most people tend to pay attention to kind of what's going on. What did you see at the beginning versus how it ended? You know, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of experience in Super League. Definitely, you know, Young Boys in Orlando were always an attacking team from the start, and you knew that they were going to be pushing. You know, I, Real really was making a push there at the end. They were definitely thought maybe they could sneak in, but a couple bad games really can can make that difference for you like it did, unfortunately, for Exile. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, when we talk about League 2, we have some of our underachievers. You know, Benfica really thought they were going to be up there in that, those, you know, those one of those top spots, and they're definitely not where everyone expected them to be. So I, I think there were definitely some some surprises, but some upsets as well. Absolutely. Will chime so in. You, oh, go ahead. Well, uh, you were you brought up champions. I was just and we talked about Orlando, and we talked about young boys, and we talked about Real Madrid a little bit. Who are the alleged champions? That's what I want to know. The alleged champions. I mean, obviously, Will. Man City is always a champion, but. <laughs> In in my in my sense though in my sense though champions are yeah. you teams that got relegated so you're not quite a champion you're a champion you chumps yep. you got relegated we'll shout you guys out a little bit later but will what kind of feedback did you have on this season well oh to be honest I uh I called young boys winning the title last podcast and I got heat for that so <laughs> f the haters right f the haters. Hey, in fairness, in my defense, I said they just don't care enough about the league, which, as you can tell, they almost <laughs> sold it off because they didn't give a shit and they just happened to care of the day when it mattered, which is fine. Uh, but they almost lost to Lyon. Let's not throw that under the rug here. They nearly lost to Lyon or Drew, I guess. Excuse me. But they got a, a goal on the back out. So I before refuse, we start. I, I refuse this shit talk about the team that just won the Super League title. I don't. I don't. I absolutely you want to crown can't. them? You have to crown them. I'm just they're crowned. No, it's not if we want to. Crown, they did it. Yeah, I mean, there's... at the end of the day, they're the champs. Yeah, did you know they put yeah. off five fucking games to play back later in the season? Yes. Yep. But they also had to get punished by sitting there and having to start a game before eight o'clock. You know, the last three or four yeah. game days. So they had to play four or three games the last couple game days, and they managed to get like get good results from it. So. Granted, yeah. the fact that they had all those games in hand most of the season could have been a big factor mentally, knowing that the teams that they had to play against in those playbacks, well, you know, I, I say that and then immediately think back of they lost 1-0 to Monaco, and I'm pretty sure that was a makeup game. So that was one game that took three points away that did kind of make the race a little yeah. bit closer than expected there at the end. So shout out to Monaco yeah. for getting a dub over them, but at the end of the day, young boys were still able to grab, you know, I guess the last 
I, I I don't know the number off the top of my head, but numbers are just crazy right now, flowing around. Um, yeah, credit to them. I I don't want to sound completely bitter because credit to them, they did win it. I mean, look at the look at the table. They ended up at the top. No hate, straight up. Straight up, and yeah, you know, uh, again, looking at teams that were maybe not expected to finish as high, but did finish as high. You had Atlanta up there. Now, granted, a lot of these guys are veterans, and you know, if if you've been around the pro club scene a while, then you know these guys. Um, but nobody was really expecting them to finish as high. I know Logan had mentioned that uh, earlier in the Discord, like, "Hey, you guys were shitting on Atlanta beginning of the season, but yet here we are, you know, peeking through into Super Cup. So, you know, finishing what fourth, fifth, either fourth, way, fourth, making fourth. it to Super Cup. So, uh, same with LA Galaxy." Capo, I don't know if you've paid up on your bet yet, brother, but you did say that LA were going to finish higher than Orlando. You did not finish higher than Orlando. <laughs> so, yeah, good good one. I'm not going to let that one go. But LA Galaxy, they, they've they had several impactful players. Um, a lot of people questioned the way that they play and the way that they got to the end of the season. But at the end of the day, they were pulling draws instead of losses. So take that for what you will. It got them into a fifth, sixth spot, also getting into Super Cup. So numbers don't make sense man their numbers just don't make sense like the, they're like goal differential their goals scored their goals allowed are all like mid-table numbers and it's just about pulling out the wins whenever they should have drawn and drawing in drawing games i should have lost is what it what it boils down to and I, I guess you can throw that on mentality or you can throw it on luck or whatever you know you want to attribute that to but there's a reason why they ended up fifth rather than tenth and even though their stats say otherwise yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the one thing that you can take away from this Super League season that there were three clear-cut title contenders going into the end. And the rest, I mean, the nearest one was 12 points away. That's tough. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, when you have that yeah, kind of gap, it's difficult. The, the top of the table was as tight as it has been in quite a while. For sure. Uh, for for three, sure. three teams to have the possibility to win the title on that last game day. Mm-hmm. Was uh was something crazy, and young boys having to clutch up against Lyon, what you'd expect them to do, but still having to do that. Well, I think you're you're forgetting clutching up against Valencia in the 91st minute scoring, and then yeah. clutching up against Leverkusen, who had a bunch of really good chances against them, and then again clutching up against Lyon. I mean, it was it was a an action packed night for us for sure in the Real Madrid camp, just because those are games that we're looking at because they make the Orlando game even that much more crazy than it was. And it ended up not mattering for us anyway, because we drew against Orlando. Shout out to Wani for the header. Um, but, you know, it's still something that we we looked at because there was a chance. And three weeks ago, we didn't think there was. You know, there wasn't going to be a chance for us. So the fact that they they let us back into the thing, we got to thank them for it. Yeah, absolutely. And it was it was a close uh title race as of you know two game days three game days ago and it wasn't until now that we finally realized okay all the games are in and that's how the points ended up lying and it was a lot closer than maybe some people would have called it real madrid and mm-hmm. in, in all of y'all's glory were one of the best defensive teams this year and nobody can deny all that absolutely not because y'all had you know i guess most clean sheets least goals allowed and mm-hmm. as a dominant force it puts y'all rightly up top you know wherever y'all dropped points here and there might have been y'all's downfall early in the season. Um, Mm -hmm. But the back half of the season, you guys really picked it up, and it was something to see there actually being a competition between several teams, whereas in, you know, seasons past, maybe it is only one team flying away with the title or two teams maybe in contention. But this year, there was a nice little chase, and I guess young boys having those games in hand did kind of play into that because it did jumble up the numbers a little bit until those last couple game days. But all in all... Super League was great this year, and it was fun to watch. There's a lot of good matches, uh, a lot of good memes as well, and a lot of uh, toxicity flowing around from results of this season. So it was great to see, and you know, every season, seeing Super League excel and be more competitive than it is seasons prior is always great. I'm not saying that this is one of the most competitive, and you know, some can argue if it is or not, but I think that in all entirety, Super League as a whole seems to be funneling talent to it instead of into the bottom leagues, which is honestly what we all want, right? We want Super League to be the elite league. And I think this year it's kind of getting to that tipping point. 
it felt like that for me. I mean, having played, you know, almost every single game of the season, I mean, there was never really an easy game day. You would play against teams that were near the bottom of the table, and it was just like, all right, lads, we should beat these guys. And you go into the game, and you get smacked 6-0. <laughs> right. Whoa. 6-0? <laughs> um, by Wolves. Somebody yeah. lost 6 nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, shout out to Wolves. When they were uh, bottom Hold three. On. Yeah, I do want to shout out Wolves here, actually. Like, <laughs> on a team form table in the, in the final 10, they were the fifth-ranked um, fifth ranked team in the yeah. last 10 games. Yeah. Um, really fighting their way. Um, Prince did a good job motivating his squad there to not get relegated. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, uh, I mean, just to kind of touch ahead. on those relegation teams, shout out to Wolves making it out of relegation. Shout out to Lyon for having a great season last season and to this season to now being relegated alongside of Tottenham and Inter Milan. They'll be joining League One coming season 15. Pretty crazy when you think about it, as, as, at least for Lyon. Now, maybe some people were like, ah, no, nah, we saw it coming because of server side, you know, in a server side this season, you know, Leon's going to drop off. There was that whole chatter. Um, and, you know, that probably takes, in, you know, its own, that, that takes its own effect on the team. But all in all, these three teams, it just seemed like Inter Milan was just fumbling. T tried to start the season, you know, with no names matter, didn't work out. Absolute shocker. shambles. Yeah, shocker, right? Everybody, nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. Um, Tottenham was maybe not as much a surprise to others, but they've been a decent middle table team for so many consecutive seasons. It's weird to see him dropping down into relegation. What are our thoughts on these guys uh, that made it into the relegation zone? Uh, I have a unique experience because our goalkeeper fell asleep against Inter Milan and they scored. And we got a draw. So early on in the season, that's exactly what you were talking about, Taco, is giving up shitty points to bad teams. That's one of them. Mm-hmm. So bad team pulled out a result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I'm, you know, go ahead. No, like what I was just going to say is, man, I mean, there's always that kind of tier of teams that just aren't going to be competing at the top level. Like, you know, you have it in the Premier League. You have it in every single league around the world. It's just... It's just the way football works, man. You're going to have teams that are really going to struggle. And even though I don't think LAFC really had the worst roster in the league, they were bottom, you know, half, you know, at the halfway point. And right. there's a lot of changing pieces. I mean, Leon, you know, collapsed and folded after, you know, bottling the title last season. And I, there's just, there's a lot of different factors that factor into it, but team talent is not always the number one factor. And also it's not, you know, just about your team's connection or this or that. And it's just, mm-hmm. there's a lot of different things that factor in and make teams good or bad. And um, this season, there were three that were just worse than the others. <laughs> yeah. And that conversation of what makes a team good or bad, we're actually going to be touching on later into the episode. Uh, that was a question brought into you guys. Again, thank you for that, uh, for the input on how the episodes have been so far and what you guys expect to see. So appreciate the feedback. Um, we'll talk back into that conversation later, though. Just kind of some highlights and things from this season. Um, Ty Ty, you guys had several outstanding players overall in Super League. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead and give some shout outs there, feel free. Oof, goodness you guys had gracious. Some strikers that were forced to be ready yeah. with. I mean, first, let's start at the back quickly. So that is the second best defense in PCN's mm-hmm. history, for what it's worth, as far as goals conceded and clean sheets. So I, I have to start there. They're, they've been imp- impeccable, including including me. I know, believe it or not, I played 26 games with the team and did pretty well. Uh, but the the two other guys that I would like to bring up are, are, uh, one, are what am I saying right now? Winnie, obviously. I almost said Wani. Words are Jesus hard. Christ. <laughs> no. Winnie, uh, Winnie the Kid, Winnie Nine, whatever you know him as. Uh, the guy had uh, 41 goal contributions on the season for us, which is an immaculate number, highest in Super League as far as uh, in the league play. And then also uh, Friolito. Frio was uh, a dynamic striker for us, and it looks like he's going to eke out the golden boot by a few goals. So kudos to him. I mean, if you haven't haven't seen him play, I recommend you watch some of his film. He's an impeccable player. Uh, he deserves to be talked about um, for his ability, not only on the ball, but in possession as well. Uh, off the ball too, I guess on the ball and on in possession are the same damn thing, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. According to this FIFA, nothing makes sense. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but no, he, he's a great player and uh, I'm happy to have him on the team. 
Yeah, I guess we can kind of dive into Super League Todd's predictions right now briefly, just kind of based on uh, some of the stats, looking at PER, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you say that either of those players that you mentioned or both are in contention for a striker spot on the Super League team of the season? I definitely I, think Frio is. Yeah, I think it's tough to say the Golden Boot winner does not make Tots. That okay. is very difficult. Okay. I, I can't say how that vote is going to go, but to me, it is a difficult to, it, thing to not vote the Golden Boot winner. And then if you're talking about Winnie, look at his assists, man. 22 assists on the season. The next near nearest guy had eight fewer assists. Eight. That's right. insane. So, like, for him not to make it as well would be extremely tough. But, but again, you know, what do you do? When he's got top three for key passes, too, so that I think yeah. that speaks a lot to the fact that he's not only is he putting the ball in the back of the net, but he's, like you said, all the assists, the key passes. I mean, he's he's moving the ball and getting it to – to people in dangerous opportunities or dangerous places. Yeah, it would be extremely unlucky for them both not to find their names on the list. Uh, but again, if I'm but one voter and looking at the numbers, you know, who knows? It's a it's a thing that uh, they're definitely in contention for, for sure. So here, here's the thing for me. Uh, when we're talking about teamless season voting for, especially the strikers for Super League, You've got Cassie and Evo and Frio and Wenny who all like put up insane statistical seasons, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Those are four strikers from two teams. And mm -hmm. those are going to be like the four strikers that are selected. It's a bit crazy that those guys are leading the tops of the PER boards for, for strikers. Um, you know, the first place in, or second place and third place teams. But yeah, um, it would be a crazy circumstance for those four guys from those two teams to be selected. Um, I mean, shout out to them if they do, uh, but it would be. A, something I haven't seen before in PCN. Yep. Two tandems just being selected. Yep. It's uh, it's wild. But, uh, you know, I the only game that Winnie missed was actually a Lyon default. So we didn't actually miss any games. So it's like, it's tough to, to make it so that the top assist getter doesn't make it and also the golden boot winner. So I don't, I don't know, man, but because Essie, Cassie and Evo have been amazing this season. So like, who do you right. vote for? Yeah, I mean, Kessie and Evo both combined have 43 goals on the season as well as 125 key passes combined. And as a yeah. striking unit, that's nuts. I mean, yeah. but we can't really count out the fact that, you know, young boys, Super League champions, not champions, had Azteca's leading the way with 18 goals and only 29 appearances, 8 assists and 32 key passes. Now... Also, this is, this is another conversation that kind of comes up when it comes to team of the season is how many games played should be considered when voting for somebody for tots? What do you guys think okay. to chime in there? All right. Now you're diving in, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. I bring the juicy questions. Oh, man, I don't know. I, th I think two-thirds is, I think, a, a good standard. Whether or not it's a rule is irrelevant. It's two-thirds is a standard. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's very difficult to give a whole season with 26 or fewer games. I just think that there's no way you're going to win a full a full tots with fewer than 20, 28 games, maybe even. Will? Chad? No, I agree. I I have some mixed feelings because at the end of the day, if you know a guy plays 20 games and he kills it and scores 40 goals in those 20 games, like how can you not? But at the same time, is that really player of the, the season you know team of the season quality like when we talk about it and, and it's not you know you you what if half of those games were against bottom table teams i mean so yeah the two-thirds is definitely i think a good number to make sure that you're not only playing against some low-level teams but a, a consistent spread of opponents it's about that consistency man that's the hardest yeah. part for good players mm -hmm. is is being consistent over Oh, oh, Will, are we losing you? Will, I'm here. Am I back? There you I'm go. Back. Oh, now there you're back. Is. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. You yeah, lagged my, a little uh, bit into the matrix. Yeah, Welcome sorry. back. Um, what I was saying was, it's just it's really hard for a player to play 38 games consistently well rather than 20. You know, it's it's about half the difference. And being good for 20 games and having a really good season does not really level up to being pretty good for 38 games, in my Fair. opinion, because that consistency factor is the most important thing for a manager and for a team uh, being there every single day to 
you know, be someone you can, your team can rely on. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, at a certain point, ratios do matter, right? Like if somebody has fought like four or five games less, but then does have the same amount of goals or assists or key passes. And like, what does that say about the player with less games? Does that say, well, it's a smaller sample size. So consistency doesn't drive in at the end of it. Or does that say, well, damn, they did the same amount of results with less games played. So what does that say about the talent of the guy above them? So I think there's a lot of different things that we consider when it comes to. Hmm? No. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Live show. Live show. All right. Jeez. Would you like a burrito taco? Or uh, young, or the, the, young, the young taco brother hopped in, <laughs> hopped into the scene and had a question for me. Sorry about that. But anyways, right. yeah, there's just so many different things that we factor in. And obviously, you know, when it comes to games played, when it comes to efficiency, when it comes to consistency, those are all things that we think about. Um, I just think that it's a bigger deal to say that somebody played pretty good over 38 games rather than amazing over 28 games, right? Like that's three or four game days that that player doesn't play and potentially doesn't do anything, right? And obviously, you know, you can take trends as you want, but at the end of the day, I think games yeah. played and playing the entirety of the season has should drive in a harder nail than, you know, the efficiency of a player if they haven't played anywhere near. Yeah, I'll, I'll use me as an example, actually, because I only have, I think, 26 games played this season, maybe 28. I don't think that I should be considered for TOTS, despite the fact that I probably have one of the higher PER uh, of center backs who are eligible for TOTS. And so I don't think I should be considered because I didn't play the full 30 or 32 or 34 or 36, 38 games because, you know, obviously we had rotations and all that, but I didn't play enough, in my opinion, to constitute being eligible for TOTS. Maybe maybe team of the week, sure. You know, the, the final team of the week, sure, maybe, but not TOTS. Right. Just how I feel about it. Absolutely. The best ability is availability, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. And just kind of touching on uh, some of these other positions for Super League Team of the Season, we can kind of just brush through these some. I know we kind of dove deeper into that. Um, But just kind of last conversation on Super League. As far as when it comes to attacking mids, I mean, you see players like A. Vols, Andresi, Goatless, Capo, right? These are some guys that are definitely going to be up there when it comes to the conversation. Uh, Mm -hmm. Even when it comes to DMs, I mean, CM9, dude, what the hell are you doing, bro? What, what, (laughs) what? I just, I just can't, I can't even begin to even because you're literally putting down 242 possessions one in a 36 game time span. Like, dude, yeah. you're actually cracked. Do the math. Do the freaking math because it's ridiculous. The next yeah. highest person after that is Brap Slap with 210 possessions one in 37 games. Like, and then you have 198 from Lake, teammate, 196. 191 from Jamie and Lazo, respectively. Killer Clamps up there with 167. I mean, some of y'all's yeah. DM stats are nuts. And I don't know if that has to do with the meta build. We won't even get into that. But, like, maybe it does have to do with the fact that we have a, a nicer build to use around the midfield this year. So that could also come into effect. Nicer. But... It's OP as... <laughs> yeah. I mean, but Jamie playing five fewer games and having almost 50 fewer possessions won is... I mean, that tells you the quality of CM9. If Jammy played almost as many games and wasn't really even that close, right? that's tough. Yeah. Right. That's Absolutely. an impeccable season. I mean, I what mean, do you 24 do? PER, man. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when we write out PER every, every season, we think about 20 being elite, like elite, top, yes. top, top quality. So when you're talking about, what, five guys Burgers above 20? Fries? Five, yeah, five guys, burgers, and fries. Yes, That's not sponsored. Uh, but five gentlemen of the field in the DM being above 20 PER, that's insane. I mean, that's ridiculous. Either we need to recalibrate or these guys are just crap. You tell me. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people would agree that PER needs to be touched on, but we don't have to get into that. Okay, okay listen, you. Anyway, we'll, we'll get into it one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about it all day. It's fine. PCM podcast PER edition. PER mm. edition. As we sit here and do math on screen for your liking and entertainment. <laughs> I know y'all yes. love that. Really awesome. Yeah. 
And then just kind of touching on some of our uh, defensive players Nothing of the year more. for Super League. D-Bass Nothing like in. interactive spreadsheets. Interactive spreadsheets. I can't wait for that. <laughs> interactive spreadsheets, right. Yeah, well, you know, I have my little Apple pin over here going to town on my <laughs> iPad. Just, just oh, drawing away, yeah. multiplying no. and subtracting fractions of anyways. Right. Sorry that's, to that's interrupt some, you That's there. some people care about. No, you're good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we have D Bass, Unlucky Owen, somehow making second in P. Somehow, you have something to say, Taco? Somehow, and then we have Solar, Exile, Teo, Austin, Prime Libero, Coops. Wani's not on the list, but of course, we can always dedicate that to his center center back role. Uh, do yeah. I have anything to say about that? Obviously, Man City's defense was shaky all season, but again, countering that, when you have a shaky defense you have one player defensively that typically stands out because you are defending more and are raking in more stats. So that's mm -hmm. always, you know, one of those things that like, even if you're like, just because you have really high stats as a, as a defender, I mean, obviously mostly center back here is what we're talking about. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you were just super great or, or outstanding. It could also mean that your team on most of the time was defending more. So you do pick up more defensive stats and, that's always one of those things that you have to think about. Shout out to Seabass. Yeah, Seabass. Wow. For, for being top PER, I mean. Yeah, no. For having also top shout PER. out to him for being exactly who you're just talking about. My I God. I don't know who he was last season, to be no, honest. No, but he goes on a team that is literally pinned into their own half the entire season. And Fair. of course he's going to get tons of stats. That's wonderful that he got them, but. But not every player is going to be good enough to get those stats. No, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, that's that's not that's not a qualitative analysis on his performance right. or his, his ability. It's just looking at uh, when you're hemmed into your own half for most of the season, you're gonna get stats. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, would we be surprised if we saw anybody outside of these lists here come up into team of the season? Is there any names that maybe ring a bell? Or is it pretty straight cut forward that we can kind of tell based on stats and based on what we've seen eye test wise that these top stat wise players are going to be most likely team? Oh, now that's that's a deeper question. But, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I mean, typically this is what it comes down to. A lot of people will look at numbers when it comes to um, team of the season voting stuff mm -hmm. like that. But outside of that, there's there's typically typically no surprises, right? But you know, we see it every year. So and so got cheated, and this and that. We do see it every year. It's hilarious. Just don't, but just we don't do. be ass, and you'll make team of the season quit. easy. To the point where some people actually just retire. They sell their Xbox and their headphones, and they move away. Shout out to, yeah. Anyways. Well, if you know, you know. If you know, you know, guys. Okay. If you know, he's you coming back. Know. He's coming Hopefully. back. No, he's not. No, yeah, he's, he's coming not. back. He's coming back. Uh, inside wait. sources say that he sh who shall not be named is making a return. Okay, I'll DM him. We'll find out <laughs> on the next podcast. He, he's gonna DM you back and be like, "Dude, what the hell are you talking about? What's Xbox?" Exactly. What do you mean? I sold that shit. <laughs> Rumor mill starting uh, early, baby. However, I, I do like I do like the guy. He's a great dude. <laughs> Shout out to him. All right, moving on to League One. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Ajax. We did it. All I right. Can't, I, can't, I can't say we. You guys. Wow. Can't. Yeah, guys. Wow. You know, good six games, Taco. No, I have no idea how many you played. I don't know. I, I don't know how many I played. I played like twelve Shatton or something Dirk. like that. I played enough for it to be counted for me too. So I'm really, I'm really proud good. that that group of players was able to win League One. Really proud of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, we're all shocked. Uh, you, we we oh, all knew God, you had God. it in you though. Oh, uh, it, it was it was never drawn out this way from the beginning. You guys had to earn it. You know, good good on you. Yeah, totally blindsided everyone. Chad, as a fellow League One manager, pulling out a side that finished just about upper mid-table, what was your take on the League One season? Um, IX wasn't a surprise, especially with some of the acquisitions that they made in the transfer window to kind of shore things up at the back because that definitely was their weakest point. Um, you know, we put, I think, three or four past them in the first game that we played you guys before the transfer window, so there was definitely a clear difference for them after that, that carried them on to win the title. I mean, 
they somehow they didn't end up being the top scoring team in the league. But I mean, when we look at who it was with Atlanta, that's not a surprise either with the roster that they had over there. Honestly, looking at the top five or six teams, the two teams that don't surprise me the most about being up there, um, and some people are probably going to think they were overachievers, are Lille and Arsenal. I honestly, playing against Lille and Arsenal was always one of the tougher games to play, regardless of, of the result. Even when we were playing friendlies against them or, or warm-ups you know, before games, they, they always put up a good game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm getting a little triggered, by the way. Go Sleepy, on. I see you. I see you chatting in there, saying we should have come second. You guys had four points reducted, bro. Four points added back on. <laughs> That's a win even, and a draw. A win and a draw, oh my, bro. It doesn't <laughs> even put you into third. Come on, man. It doesn't even put you into third, yo. One high. I, I did not expect the shade from Chad, though. Like our concept, my man. Uh, that was weird. Like. You saying, well, we put three past uh, Ajax. That's a weird flex, but kudos. I mean, it, I just it, it bolsters, I think it I love bolsters it. the point of him saying, it. like, the the moves they made at the end of the season or midway kind of altered their defense. And by yeah. throwing that kind of, hey, look, we shit it on them, a little flex, a little flex on them uh, at the beginning of the season, kind of, you know, supports yeah. that a wee bit. A wee oh, bit. That's awesome. I'm, that's good. It's a good thing to hang your head. I mean, on. I don't know if you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the Marky matchup last night or not, but dude, that Lil versus Hearts game was unreal. Oh so my goodness, yo, that game was nuts. Shout out to Lil and dude, Pinkley, five, you guys over there, correct? Five one. Uh, Nunzi's managing now, but dude, yeah, oh. yeah Nunzi now. Yeah, long story, and you know, okay, to get into it. But I yeah, dude, the game too. was nuts. I've rewatched that game wow. twice today. 5-5. Five, five. And, and Vape's solo commentary, hilarious, by the way. They go up 5-1, <laughs> Lil does, in like the 50th minute or the 55th minute or some shit like that. And all of a sudden he goes, well, the game's over. I'm calling it right now. That's it. And then like five minutes later, it's like 5-5. Five, five, and he goes, oh, curse of the commentator, I guess. I don't even know what to say at this point. I'm just as surprised as you guys. <laughs> and it, it was just a scene. There was... Just I, I don't I don't I don't know. It's it's hard to really pinpoint exactly why there were that many goals until I watched it the second time and then realized that the second half was Brexit as fuck. Like there were <laughs> like you would see Fuji just turning around at the top of the box after winning it and just launching it. Like just full on, full bar, LBY, sins, and it was just Brexit. I thought I was watching a freaking another match. Never, no, you know, no name to be needed, but it was great. It was fun to watch. I mean, and, and one of the best games we had on Marky Matchup ever, dude. Yeah. Wow. Five, five to one, and then come back from five to one. It was what three zero at half, four one at half, three one. Something, I can't even remember, man. You know, Anyways, I mean, there, there's, there's and, goals in both, but the second half, you know, blew up. <laughs> it was crazy, and I and the craziest part to me was the fact that like after scoring five, they didn't score again until like the ninetieth to win it. And that was it. And it was just total yeah. chaos the entire time. I don't even know it if there was, was like any true possessions in there. It was just like, all right, we need to get the ball forward. I think I remember hearing Boot say something about, yeah, you know, at that point we were just trying to have fun. We were just wanting to, you know, make the most out of it and just enjoy ourselves because at that point when you're losing five to one, what else can you do? And it turns out yeah. that was a good thing. He had a good halftime talk, I guess. <laughs> what a halftime talk. Yeah, no. Uh, nobody is slandering uh, Brexit ball, by the way, Jack. It's we're not trying to come at you and your people. Forgive us. It's oh. just uh, you know, it's a tactic that works. And also, this is not pre-recorded, Scarada. Why are you being dumb? Anyway, moving forward. <laughs> pre-recorded, Scarada. Come on now. Come on. Um, shout out to Arsenal, by the way. We haven't talked about them, but mm -hmm. coming second in a good League One season. I mean. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Um, they had some really good stat leaders as well. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, Arsenal were a really good team this season. They really came on strong after like the first quarter of the season, and uh, and they killed it. Shout we'll out. Clip I, that. I hate having to say I'm uh, shouting out did, Arsenal. Right did now. you say shout out Arsenal? Shout Hold out on, Arsenal. one more time. Will one more time. shout Jack, out. Clip that. Arsenal, Jack, guys. Come clip on. that. Clip it. Clip it. PC and <laughs> Arsenal. I'll, I'll have to. I'll have no, to it's, like, uh, it's already said. You can edit the clip. We can edit the clip. You're happy for Arsenal, and we're happy that you're happy for him. At least 
you know, you don't have to be a fan of just one shit team. You can be a fan of two. <laughs> all good. <laughs> my my two mid table clubs. Yeah, your two mid table fantasies, trophy <laughs> fantasies. But yeah, just touching on some of these guys uh, for team of the season. This, I mean, mm-hmm. you have Erickson, Spartan, for striker, uh, Bull twenty three or three two one from Atlanta. Hey, well, putting up. Can we talk about him? Can we talk about this guy that yeah. put up thirty eight goals? Absolutely. Go for like, it. Like what? Oh, that's impressive. That's all. Like. He, he that's not updated. I don't think he's he on had loan. thirty. He had thirty eight. I think, to my knowledge, I, I did them this afternoon. So oh. they could have just thrown in stats. Did somebody take some away? Uh, uh, did we just uncover some kind of the, uh, stat padding scenario? PC, no, PC this morning conspiracies. <laughs> this this morning he had thirty eight goals. So maybe, maybe they had to adjust. I don't Who know. Knows. I don't know. Bottom line though. He uh, killed it, and he's on loan there. So I don't, I don't know the situation, but that's a good loan. That's a great loan pickup. Big it's good on you. Yeah, and then obviously you have a uh, Leo Shamrock there. Bimps coming in towards mm-hmm. like the eight or nine spot there. P R wise, then R nine Rodriguez. Elements of God, the ultimate shitter himself. I love you, bro. Um, yeah. So I look when it comes to these guys here. I would think that title winning Ajax striker Erickson gets it. Does his partner Bimps necessarily make the cut? Personally, I don't think so. Eric had Eric had thirty two goals and twenty assists. So if he doesn't make it, the thing's broken. I'm sorry, that's stupid. Right? Yeah. Somebody well, fix I'm... this damn machine. Fifty two goal contributions. <laughs> I think I gotta look at Shamrock too, though, because I mean, he put up not only a large amount of goals, but I think if you look back at over the stats. A lot of the games, he was one of the most consistently at putting the ball in the net. In Cam is an awesome games. League One striker, so, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> need to be considered for that awesome spot as well. League One striker? Jesus, Will. He's a great League One striker. I mean, he's. I mean, season 12, he scored, let me see here, 20 goals. Well, 23 goals. He scored 33 in season 11, 28 cool. in season 10. Like, I mean, he's scoring crazy amounts of goals, but, you know. But doesn't, he, like but doesn't Erickson already have his Super League golden boot? He does, yeah. I so, think season nine, eight. I don't remember eight, eight, eight or nine, yeah, something like that. Yeah, Jackson, so three feet ago. Let us know. I'm sure you know. Sure. Three feet was ago. Three feet was ago. You know, in all of its glory, it's still on the shelf, and that's what matters. Oh, dude, not taking anything away from him. He's an incredible player. Straight up. But yeah, these, and then you know, Must really hard these Arsenal like guys. Season. It was funny because looking through their stats for Arsenal, I didn't really see anybody else who stood out scoring wise. For Arsenal, besides Spartan. And so I always thought that that was a pretty funny thing for me. I mean, you had Master Spank me at, like, attacking mid or somewhere outside mid, I guess, Ram, Lamb type position, and he was also another factor. But they didn't really have anybody else, to me, that stood out yeah. as being able to, like, put them over the top there, whereas you have these other teams that have, like, multiple attacking players. Atlanta with two or three strikers up there, attacking yeah. mids up there, high in the PER and stat ratings. Um, yeah. Erickson, Bimps, Vicious, all up there very high in the PR stat ratings. Um, Arsenal seemed like that team that they were tough to beat, but not tough to draw. Or like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they were they were that team that just like played really scrap all game and eventually they got one or they just didn't lose. <laughs> I don't have the experience of playing, you know, playing them this season. We did watch some game film. Um, they played like a four one four one, I think, um, which was really strange, I think, for PCN and pro clubs in general. But I mean, their stat leaders are insane. I, you know, Master, I'm not gonna say his name. Uh, Teddy swims. Um, shoot. All right. Spartan. It's crazy. Right. Yeah. And just kind of uh, popping over into the DMs area, we have a uh, Dortmund Sabinator. You know, his name's come up at the last couple seasons. We've seen him play in pretty pretentious leagues and dynasties in the past, so no surprise that he's in the League One talking pretentious? here. Pretentious? Well, what, what do you mean? <laughs> well, wasn't, wasn't Saab in, like, the olden days Juve or, like, with Italiano-type golden days back in the day days? Or am I just absolutely losing my mind live on stream well, right he, now? He played, for, he played for Young Boys for quite a while. He's been around since, like, season six, I think. Right, he's an old head. Maybe yeah, yeah, he's been around a while. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah, but you, you I think the 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 qualm is with the word pretentious. pretentious? All right, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, because 
What about um, notorious? You know. Does that fit or no? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. You All can right. use that. Autocorrect, pretentious, and notorious. Thank you. <laughs> Makes but yeah, sense. and then you have uh, Zidane Whatever. from Ajax, Python Poppy, aka Five Six Poppy, aka Poppy. Uh, then you got Flare Shark, Southern Blend, Brando Nico, Ed Silent, and Panunzi himself, the new Lil manager, as I've been told. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know these names are great. Zidane, Dad Job, aka, has been you know a force to be reckoned with. The dude. Uh, although I have my own opinions, I think in possession he could be a little bit better. On in all honesty, I think that's probably his one flaw. But like as far as defensive mentality, playing behind him was just like he was always in a good spot, and he was mm -hmm. always covering spaces where runs were being had. So it was always nice to have a DM in front of you like that. And I think he showed up all season for these guys, um, in in more ways than just on the field. Managers, you're welcome. Uh, but yeah, and then some of these other guys like Flair Shark from Real Sociedad. I've kind of watched some of him. He's from that recent Flair group that showed up several seasons ago. And you know, from the eye test, he has a good positional mindset. But I think when it comes to decision making, all uh, off the ball defensively of when to step or when to like you know try to cut out a passing lane, that's where he kind of lacked. But Shark himself, I think, was really good off the eye test. He played for Sociedad, not one of the greatest teams in Super League. Again, you know, you can kind of contribute a more defensive base side to his stat base as well. Um, but yeah, there's just some players here that no surprise. But again, you just got to give them the recognition where it's due because they did play really well. Fact check. They're not in Super League. Did I say Super League? We were talking you about did. League One, right? League One. Yeah. But you said Super League, but yeah. Well, I mean, we know. Obviously, they're well, not. You know. If you know, you know. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. You know. Right. I'm, I hear you. I, I'm the notorious words are hard guy, okay? They don't expect me to not have multiple verbal okay. typos okay. all episode. I was just triggered. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, Ty, I'm sure you're triggered about a lot more things than me mistaking Super League for League One. Yeah. I mean, I, it's fine. No, shout <laughs> out to Leo. What do you want? Y'all want to cut? What do you want, Nunzi? What do you want? Uh, wait, hey, um, can we talk about Atletico Madrid not making playoffs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh. Because. They were in the top four, top five all season long. And since playoffs come around, they're like, nah, I don't want to play FIFA anymore. Nah, they're out. So uh, <laughs> I'll enjoy League One for another <laughs> season. Oh, no. Mm, oh, no. Mm, 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 mm. I like uh, Oswald a lot. but Yeah. They're good teams. At the them. end in League One, though, too, at the end. Because, I mean, when you look at the table i mean from third place all the way down to seventh place it's only an eight point spread so a team wins a couple more games you know ties one or two there they're they're easily in a in a much higher spot on the table than they were so yeah it definitely comes down to just consistency i think yeah i mean the last mm -hmm. eight games of the season they were ranked ninth in form yeah uh but when yeah. you have arsenal atlanta barcelona and hearts and Lille all above you that's I a mean, tough mountain to climb yep oh yeah when everyone else is playing well, but you're just kind of not, it's tough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I think on a previous podcast we touched on that, is like what's more important to have a good – well, obviously you want to be consistent throughout the whole season, first of all. Option number one. Option number two or three would be like what's more important to have a good start half to the season or a good ending half to the season. And I think you could see that a lot of ending half of the seasons – is what really let teams down that were in positions to do or accomplish more. So you could arguably say that like the back end of the seasons, when you really got to buckle down as a team and realize like, look, we're this close to this goal that we want to reach. Let's keep fighting and do it instead of just dropping off and realizing like, damn, like it's this gap is slowly spreading. I think, I think perception has a lot to do with that because if you have a poor start to the season, whenever you, actually, you know, buck up your ideas and you actually improve, people are like, oh, man, look, they're actually good now. But if you're good at the beginning of the season and then you, like, tail off, it's like, oh, they were never really that good. They're just reverting back to what they should be or where they should be. Like, right. look at Leicester, for instance, in, in Premier League, in real life. I mean, had an insane, like, half halfway start of the season, but now they're kind of just suck. And they're not going to get Champions League football, it seems like. So... Uh. I mean, I think that's just where it's at. I think it's all about perception and how your team is, you know, looked at from outside the league. 
Yeah, for sure. Any closing comments here for League One as we transition over into League Two? Shout out to the rookies of League One. Good on you. Yeah. Cool. So everybody's telling us to talk about that on on stream. So what, the rookies, the all rookies you, that you, came you in, first year guys that want recognition. Nunzi, all of you. No, people. Nunzi's saying that seven rookies were on Leal this season. Seven. That's a great, great number for them to bring into the league. Congratulations. I hope they do well for us in the future. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, and you know, we'll we'll get all hype about you guys first season. You want us? You want recognition? All this and that. That's fine. We get it. It's cool. We appreciate that, yeah, you know, sure. there are new people. I mean, obviously, one thing that's never mentioned but is always assumed is that, like, we as a league appreciate new players always coming in to improve the talent level of the league because, ultimately, we want PCN to be the most competitive league or continue to be the most competitive league in some people's eyes. And when we have, you know, teams like Lil, where, allegedly, you do have seven to eight rookies or six to seven, whatever number was just spouted out, and that's great. It, you love to see it, honestly. I mean, and, you know, granted, we're not going to always know who y'all are because there, there's so many other things going on. But when we have rookies coming into the league and making a presence known, that's always cool. You love to see the Cinderella stories. You love seeing the teams that are like, look at us. Like, we're, like, we're doing it, and nobody said we were going to do it until we did it to them kind of thing. So I know, like, as a, as a newer player in the league, you always love that. You always like, kind of want that of, like, Oh, like look at us! Like look, look what we did. They got promoted, so that's a big deal. They're on their way to Super League next season, and so hopefully that team can kind of stay together and gel more in the off season and come mm -hmm. out as like a lower mid table to upper mid table team. Who knows? Um, but yeah, kind of transitioning over off into League Two. Bam, 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 bam. Don't know what that sound was. Don't ask. Uh, but Celtic winners, yep. congrats. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Celtic are our League Two champions, not champions. Oh, well, I guess um, let's also mention the relegated. I forgot about champions for League One. Our, our League One champions are as follows. We have Roma, Wolfsburg, Real Betis, and PSV joining our lower ranks of League Two next season. You hate to see it, but y'all were ass, so you're getting relegated. PSG mm. made the cut, though. Just PSG. Just by the skin of their teeth. Yes, Woo. well in, lads. <laughs> PSG the, not uh, suffering the Liverpool fate this season. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's tough. Big tough. Big tough. All right. So let's talk about League Two. <laughs> Can we talk about how um, Celtic had as hard of a time as Ajax did? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, not really. I think that Ajax's I mean, road was a lot was a lot smoother than Celtics. Granted, you know, Celtic made several moves during the transfer window that kind of pushed them ahead. Dear, like, at the beginning of the transfer window, I remember looking back, seeing Celtic in that third or fourth place range. They definitely weren't at the top. Uh, Racing Club at that point, midseason, was definitely the team to beat. Uh, Southside Pirates and Unique Shots over there at that grounds were really holding it down first half of the season. But with these moves that Celtic made, going into the transfer window, it is what boosted them. I mean, look at their last 20 games, Celtics. They lost two and won the other 18 of their last 20. Not even a draw. Their, their two losses were Toronto 1-0 and Marseille 4-0. Now, granted, that Marseille loss is terrible. Who knows what happened that game day? Everybody has Marseille them. did get promoted, by the way. Marseille did get promoted. This is true. Can confirm. Hey, everybody, everybody has a 4-0 loss in them, okay? <laughs> Relax. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I mean, but when it comes to end-of-season form, we, we've touched on this briefly uh, throughout this podcast episode, but these guys at Celtic had a hunch on their shoulder going into the back half of the season and said, you know what? We're going we're gonna to take it to them. We're going to keep battling until the last game day. I mean, and even points-wise, they separated – by 13 points by the end of the season. They, their, their form was just untouchable. Nobody was catching them. They were beating their roster top teams. Untouchable. Yeah, no absolutely. One, no one else in the league had the roster like that. So I, I, I want to give them credit for winning the league, but I don't want to give them credit because they struggled so hard for the first half of the season, and they made it look so much harder than it actually was. With a, with a roster like that, it shouldn't have been that difficult for them yeah. to have come out on top. 
Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. I know they pulled away, like, and it looked easy if you just look at the season as a whole and reflect on it. But man, if you like take a look at the midway point of the season and you see where Celtics at and their points gap to Racing Club and Bill Bow were right there in the mix. I don't know, man. It's hard for me to give them so much credit. No, well, you can only play the people in front of you. That's what everybody always says, right? And it's a lot of just words, actually, because they really, they should have done that. I mean, they, you've got to win. So yep. they, they did what they were supposed to do. Good job. I mean, I, I'm actually very impressed with Toronto and Racing Club for being able to put together sides that can compete and put themselves in the position to get promoted because League Two is not a pushover league anymore. So to see these leagues growing like this uh, and seeing Liverpool dead last is tough. Shout out to tough. Joe Knowns. You got a big asshole to dig yourself out of. Good luck to you, sir. Not really. Liverpool. Not well, really. There's a, only one way to go. I, I mean, mean, he can either be dead last again or <laughs> higher up. He has no expectations. The board doesn't give a <laughs> shit. All he has to do is show up and hope for the best. He could show up with five guys the entire season and probably have a better season than Rowdy just had. <laughs> Be real. Negative 45 goal differential. Negative 45. That's terrible. That, Say what and, you and want about the league. How many goals allowed did they have all season? Where is it at? 69. 69. Nice. Uh, nice. But anyway, like negative 45. Young boys oh my God. fewer goals than... Liverpool allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, no. I love that stat. I love that stat. That's a good one. So you're saying that the top team in all three leagues scored less goals than the bottom worst league team allowed. That's, yeah. That's they not only bad. scored 67 and Liverpool let in 69. <laughs> My God. I, I, I don't even know what to say about that. That is <laughs> embarrassing, frankly. <laughs> To the uh, other teams that went to, um, I mean, Porto for the last 20 games of the season were second in form, like they were awesome. That new group that took over at Porto were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, right, yeah, I want to shout out those guys. They did I know have they, some restructuring there, yeah. They brought that team from 18th to like what 10th or 9th or something, yeah, 9th, yeah, 9th, yeah. Ninth. I mean, that's, that's insane. I mean, there's goal tough. differential still negative, so you know how bad that team was to begin with, yeah, for sure. But overall. PCN season went okay. Luckily, or not luckily, unfortunately, some of you guys don't want our Dorsey twerk video because y'all keep breaking <laughs> rules every season. And if we could just go one season, one season, y'all, with no rules broken, we would get a Dorsey twerk video. Maybe even live. But guess what? It's on the podcast. On the podcast? Can't even fucking follow rules. Some cross and promotion here a little bit. Right mm -hmm. We could do I a mean... match review of Dorsey's twerk video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have like three minutes. We should probably get to the review of the cups and all that. But um, right, yeah. Although, as much as I love talking about Dorsey and and his twerk capabilities, um, yeah, let's you know. let's segue into cups. Uh, so cups that just ended, Real Madrid. Congrats. Didn't win the league, but you got some silverware. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, very excited. Very excited. So actually, the only cup I have not won other than the Super League uh, title in Super League. So, And Copa Victoria, but that just came in now, so I can't really <laughs> count that. So I'm happy. Uh, that's another one on the trophy shelf, cabinet, whatever you want to call it. It's fantastic. Um but honestly, like the guys, the guys killed it. I, I can't take credit. I mean, I played in everything but the final. Um, and you know how what they say, if you don't play in the final, it's tough to count it. But for me, it's a it's a hell of a win for us. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a fun like I think it's most of these cups, you saw a nice diversity in teams, obviously, from the starting point, you have teams from multiple leagues. But once we got closer to the end of these these tournaments, I mean, even talking about Kobe Victoria, like you brought up just now, runners up, Real Sociedad and Hearts, like winning it. That's crazy. Awesome to see. You love it. Uh, mm -hmm. Orlando got beat out there by Sociedad in the semifinal, 2 2 on aggregate. So that's definitely a big upset as we we're just, um, you know, kind of diving into underachievers. And then overachievers for this other cup would be, I mean, Sociedad, obviously making it all the way to the final, beating Orlando. That's not a. That's not a like small feat by any means. 
crazy. I mean, I think they had CM9 at striker, to be fair, but... Oh, really? Still, yeah, I think they were playing a joke, a joke lineup half the time, you know. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong, CM9 in the chat, if you want to let me know. <laughs> but I, I was under the impression that they were doing a little bit of a jumble. Not making a light of it, but, you know, giving uh, guys opportunities in different places, I think is what they would call it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I don't want to take that away from uh, Sociedad, though. Nah, no, 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 absolutely not. It's it's awesome. Like kudos. You got to have that any given game day mentality for sure, especially going into these cup matches, because anything can yeah. happen. It's just one or two games. It's not like an entire season that you have to worry about. It's just show up right now. Yeah. The glory of the cups, right? <laughs> the glory of the cups. Speaking of glory, let's kind of touch on again. Young boys also winning the league cup this year. And in a crazy fashion at that, allowing absolutely no goals throughout the entire tournament. Crazy. Speaks and their defense volumes. isn't even their strong point. I mean, mm -mm. that team is really good, but their defense is not the strongest point of that team. I th would even say that it's the weakest point. And to not allow any goals throughout the entire tournament is really, really freaking cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. And uh, especially against in the final, Orlando also allowing no goals. We just... Talk, talked about Orlando's attack earlier and how threatening they are going forward and for them not to allow any goals to that team is nuts. But well played, well played the young boys two trophies on the year. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's interesting to me that Orlando has not won a trophy yet. I mean, they're obviously worthy of of all of them, so it's very difficult to to see them not win. I guess they still have Super Cup to play in, but um yeah. I obviously don't want them to win that for obvious reasons, but, um, you know, it's disappointing to have them not already. You've already got a Super Cup, Ty. Just share with everyone I else. do already have a Super Cup, but I don't know. They won the league last year. I don't have a league, so come on. It's, <laughs> it's even, right? It's yeah. no, nobody's going to ever say that your Super Cup surmounts to anything close to a Super League title. That's no, what, absolutely not. Trying to say. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Yeah, cup. I would trade in 10 Super Cups for a Super League title. No way. Not. Mm -hmm. I'm good with just crazy. keeping my two Super Leagues. That's okay for now. Um, okay. All a right. quick look at how the brackets lined up for Super Cup. In the quarterfinals, we got Young Boys versus Celtic. We got Orlando, Ajax, Real Madrid, Juve, and Atlanta United versus LA Galaxy. Some quick touching points on these. I'm going to go to make some predictions. I'm saying Young Boys beat Celtic 2-1. I'm going to say... Orlando beats Ajax 2 to 0. Real Madrid's mm -hmm. going to win versus Juve. Ooh. Are, are these two legs? They're two legs, right? Yeah, it's two legs, yeah. Mm -hmm. I say Juve wins the first game 1-0 at home and then Real Madrid pulls 1-0 away and they win on aggregate 1 to 1. And so Real Madrid goes through on aggregate. Atlanta United and Galaxy. I'm honestly going to say Atlanta United take that one. But it's going to be 2-2 on aggregate. It's going to be a goal fest. I think those I think those are two teams that defensively and throughout their team could definitely see conceding a couple goals. Mm -hmm. What are you, what are y'all's thoughts on these brackets as they line up right here? Do what? Are, are, are you, I'm sorry, Chad. Chad, what? come back to us. Baby, to come back. Your mic is uh, yeah, like Chad's right. having some audio issues. Too. That ain't it, cuh. All right, let's move <laughs> forward. Fuzzy. Chad, no. I'm just kidding, Chad. No, I'm, we just can't hear you, man. I don't that know what it is. Like wild. That's the fun part of being live, ladies and gentlemen. Things happen, and we have to immediately jump on it right then and there. But it's Yo, okay. The great part I had some is... technical difficulties in the lead-up. <laughs> yeah, we, we also did skip the PER for League 2. That's kind of my fault. I pushed us forward. I apologize. Mm, do we uh, have to talk about League 2 PER? The Young Boys treble. They pulled the treble. They did? All right, all right. Oh, if they win, he's saying if they win Super Cup, Super it could oh, be yeah, the treble. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was like, wait, oh, what? No. That's a very Ooh. solid point, and we haven't had a team win a treble since Leon. Then we need Celtic to win. Leon right? went or, or we need Ajax or Orlando to win. Considering so, I'm at the Ajax camp and the plan that we have for our lineup going forward, I don't think we'll win a single game. <laughs> off strats? No, no. No, absolute shambles, and nobody really cares so like why I, so like i might play striker standing, with like z jig and have like dad jaw play cam i is what completely is done with the season we they honestly don't care about winning super cup but that's my that's inside tough. take 
well they're like we won the league right, let's get our tops go. let's get our rewards and move on to next season <laughs> i yeah, think I, hear that. I think they're ready just to pack it up <laughs> but they did well wanna, they did want to have fun the last you know couple game days that we have together so we're gonna probably mess around and shuffle up the lineup some It'll i mean i do i do like that orlando is going to have to play young boys if they do advance to the next right. phase so that can't be the final which is awesome for my side of the of the bracket um but either way, I mean, the best team has to win, right? So that's not to say that Celtic it. doesn't have the capacity to beat them. I mean, no, they they could very well could. But Young Boys is Super League title winners. I would expect them to win that game if they come out and actually play it. It is for a very uh, prestigious trophy. So I would like to think yep. that people would take it seriously. But you never know. Absolutely. So kind of on this final review of everything we talked about the promotion playoff finals uh marseille over leicester and then advancing in penalties we kind of touched on that earlier the crazy thriller that was lil versus hearts kind of brushed through some super league and league one uh team of the season predictions based off just per and common knowledge uh what else do you guys think that we need to cover today besides these questions that we're about to dive into really quickly i think we got it all man i mean we're over an hour now uh yeah, that's not my end. Oh. The bracket might actually adjust CM9, so don't sweat it. That was just me talking. <laughs> don't, right. don't sweat it. Like, cool, relax. Cool. So I guess we'll dive into this the second question first because I think this one is kind of what more people would want to hear about. But a uh, question from you guys in our segments that we're going to call our mailbags from now on. Uh, any mm -hmm. good ideas on the EA, on ways that EA can implement microtransactions in the pro clubs and improve the game mode? If it meant pay to win system, would you support it? And I'll go ahead and kind of open up this conversation with, uh, would I be totally fine with microtransaction in plural clubs if that meant that we got better game mode? Yes, absolutely. What ideas for microtransactions do I have? Uh, let's just look at literally any other game besides EA when it comes to a pro-based game like 2K and give us shoes. Like, give us... Give us a fucking neighborhood that we can go play soccer tennis with our homies or Volta and let's like in incorporate it that way. Let's have a neighborhood type setting where you can buy power ups or buy uh, overall levels or stats and, and, and say things like, I think Ty Ty mentioned it earlier today. If I can not spend a hundred games playing just to get my guy from 80 to 89 overall or however many games it is, obviously it's a lot more than that, mm -hmm. but like give me, give us a way to purchase levels and stats what other things do you guys have well yeah go ahead chad what, what was that no no no, no you're clue. still a little bit funky GG's chad. I, I, <laughs> I think the, the the thing that that i care about here is the time right people have people have all of the resources in the world all of them are, are replenishable the one thing you cannot replenish is time and so for me if you allow me to purchase something at 25 to 40 dollars to get my pro from an 83, whatever the bop baseline is, up to an 87, 88, uh, I will absolutely pay that because the time I can't get back. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the time that you're putting into that obviously goes into the quality of your play moving forward. So there's a, a risk reward scenario there. But when you do it in, in 2K, it allows people who come into the game later as well to play catch up way easier mm -hmm. so they don't go into a to a uh, my court like with an uh, 69 overall against the guys that are 94 and you're getting dunked on like it's nothing i mean the point is is i would like to see basic things that do not necessarily impact the actual performance of the game um i know we had talked about boost packs and things like that where you can go to a bar just like you can in 2k um but if that would affect like your career mode aspect but not the online pro clubs aspect of it. That would be appreciative uh, or appreciated because I, I don't want to affect like an online game mode in that way. I think that would cheapen it. But if you can give me an, an, a way for my player to go up in level for some money, I would absolutely do it and it would create a nice little... Uh, nest egg for EA and it would keep them happy and line their pockets so they would be fine with it, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea is that a microtransaction or a pay to upgrade system would give EA the income 
to throw at pro clubs in the future, right? That's the idea behind it. So if they're going to make plenty of money off of this, they can continue to invest their resources back into it and then make more money on it like they have with the foot cow that's been going on for, what, 11 years now? Yeah. Um, so well, that's the idea behind implementing a microtransaction system. How do you get $1.5 billion, though? That's the question, because that's what they're making this past fiscal year from just Ultimate Team. Not necessarily just FIFA Ultimate Team, but Ultimate Team, including Madden Ultimate Team. So if you can make $1.5 billion off of Ultimate Team, and you're going to lose some of that money at some point, right, with these regulatory companies and, and uh, governments coming in and ch making changes, right? So I think they're going to have to expand. Obviously, pro clubs is going to be one of those areas where they do that. Now, whether or not they do it right is probably left for you all to imagine. My guess is that they won't because they have this innate ability to fuck yep. things up. Um, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Always uh, unpredictable, yeah. yay. Always unpredictable. It's all about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'll I'll let you go ahead. Talk. Go ahead. That was it. That was just my like one dying comment for all my hope of EA and ever putting out a good FIFA game. I think maybe a good stepping stone here to like getting to like the pay to you know pay to upgrade system would be micro microtransactions for just aesthetics, anything at all like cleats, uh, tattoos, hairstyles, beard styles, whatever you want to do to implement something that we can choose to support just pro clubs. Uh, I think it was a good stepping stone. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if they implemented something like neighborhoods, like they do in 2K, it opens up that much more stuff that we can buy as apparel. Because then we just have straight up neighborhood apparel. We can yeah, and it... your Spurs jerseys, Man United jerseys, uh, like Portuguese Prince, he'd probably want, you know, his... Never mind, I don't have to mention it. But... Beard? No. His team. Oh, I don't... His wonderful, oh. wonderful beloved squad. I mean, it's I, also... I don't know what you're asking. It's also a networking tool because finding pro clubs teams can be difficult. Like as a new player who's just like playing pro clubs, you know, uh, casually, it's hard to find a team of competitive players that play a style that maybe you like or whatever. So it's, yeah. it's still a networking tool in, in, in that way still. So Cool. Yeah, I agree. And there's, there's definitely ways that EA can do it to make it where it's not necessarily pay to win, but to where we enjoy it as a community more um there's also several features that we just don't have like we've also mentioned friendlies not counting for stats i mean it's just like simple shit that that isn't done that could be done or we would assume could be done easily based on what we've seen from other games so it could be done easily let's be real i mean it would take time but they could do it yeah not sure if you don't EA have time during a quarantine then when are you going to have the time Honestly. that's fair they did, you know, one thing that everybody was saying is if you can come out of quarantine with one extra skill, you've done it. If EA could come out of quarantine with one extra good game mode, it'd be great. But You mean surely one good game one, mode, right? One game like one, mode. Not, one one, good game not, not like one game, just a uh, game mode. Is no, but I, I think one thing I would say, though, is after looking through all of the you know, online pro not carrying over in 21. One thing that I found interesting is that you cannot obviously copy over your pro from uh, Xbox One to Series X, right? But right now, like what, I, what I'm looking at is Volta will, which means that Volta is going to be different completely than the Xbox is now, because right now you can't copy it over to a new console, right? So how can you co copy it now or you can't copy it now, but now next console, you are going to be able to. Does that make sense? Yeah, Basically, yeah. it lends to the idea that they are switching that to an online game mode, right? An online ecosystem, if you will, much like Ultimate Team is an online ecosystem. You can't copy your stuff over because it's an online ecosystem that works exclusively online. So my thought is that that lends to the idea that that is going to be an overarching theme. Perhaps they're going to make Volta that neighborhood type thing and then everything else is an offshoot of that career mode and and uh and pro clubs obviously but i don't know obviously i'm just pontificating and hoping and praying for that to be a thing but i i don't know it, it's an interesting switch like how do you make that change i don't know i don't know yeah 
for sure. It's it's tough to imagine as a current pro clubs player and prior pro clubs player, not just this year, but every year before then, is like we've had the same thing for pro clubs so many years. Like it's hard to imagine what it would be if it was different. So maybe that's just kind of one of those things yeah, that we can just still hope that miraculously one day pro clubs will be amazing. But for now, get what we get and we don't throw a fit. Right, guys? That's right, team. Well, it may not be it may not be this this FIFA that all of that takes place, but they all they usually do things in stages, you know, just like the journey. They take you through this right. long, drawn out thing over a sequence of games, and maybe it'll take three or four games to get us there, which sucks. But that's how EA works. So I'm down. Yeah, I, I just case. hope they keep on uh, investing millions of dollars into these game modes that no one plays. Like Volta currently? Like Volta, like the journal. Like, the journey. The journal. Not... The journal. <laughs> the yes. Journal. EA it was about as interesting people. as the journal. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's about as interesting as the uh, interactive spreadsheets we talked about earlier. It's like, <laughs> the journal. Right. The Way journal. to sec that up, Will. Yeah, hey, put Easy. that down in the idea bin. But. Anyways, uh, if you guys are good or have nothing else, unless you want to tackle this last thing, it's about that time, <laughs> if I do say so myself. So we'll say go so ahead myself. and close out here. Listen, guys, if y'all ever have any questions that you feel you want to be answered here on the podcast, add us in the podcast, hashtag podcast in the PCN Discord. Let us know, at me, the Taco Kid 95 or at the head of podcast, or any of these other guys here. Um, feel free to let us know what you guys want to see, what you guys are liking, what you're not liking. We're totally open to feedback, and we know that this is just something that we're just starting. So yeah. don't be afraid to voice your input because y'all's input is what's important. Y'all are the people taking your time to watch us, and we appreciate that. So letting bleh, letting you know it doesn't <laughs> go unnoticed. So yeah, for sure. thank you for sure for again tuning into another episode of the PCN podcast. Uh, shout out to our Patreon patrons. We don't have a little graphic to put up, but you guys are very much appreciated as well for investing in our league. And we appreciate every single one of you, regardless of the amount that you've invested for us per month as a Patreon member. So thank you guys all once again for coming out and watching us on the PCN podcast. And we'll see you guys next week, next week for our next episode. See you guys. Peace.